Hello everyone and welcome back. This is episode number four of our Stug 4 build. Yep, we're going to name this one Bottoms Up because as the reference photographs show, this Stug is in a bottoms up position. Well, we've got quite a few things to take care of, a lot of small details, and then by the end of this series we'll be getting on to creating the diorama. Of course, we've already painted our figures. They're ready to go. And once we get finished, as I mentioned, we will have a full complete little vignette diorama here of the bottoms up scene. But we have a lot of details to take care of between now and then, so let's get started. I guess a good place to start on these details are these photo etched brackets. Now these are the brackets on the sides of the fenders that attach with the skirts in. And I purposely left these off until later in the process here because I know that through handling of the model, through painting and weathering, I would be knocking these off and chances are I would be losing them all over the floor and I just didn't want to go through that so I've purposely like I said left off many of the smaller details until the end here and I can start attaching those and just kind of do some touch up work. As usual when I work with photo etch especially late in the game like this I want to go ahead and dull down that nice shiny brass finish so I put it in a little bit of burnishing fluid just darken the color a bit so even if I miss a little bit of the paint work or I ding it a little bit and scratch the paint I won't have that shiny brass fleck just showing through. Small parts like this really don't take very much time as you see I just did it in the in the lid itself. Just pull those out let's kind of drain them on some paper towel and I'll be ready to go ahead and attach them to the model here. Now the only tricky thing with these brackets and this would have been the case whether I added them earlier or later but this is why I added them later is that the contact point between the piece of photo etch and the side of the fender is really small so that's why I said these were going to be so likely to be bumped off here during my construction process but at this stage I think I'm far enough along but <laughs> to be honest with you I did knock these off uh, again and over again from time to time so <laughs> I should have waited to maybe even later in my build process but a touch of super glue a little touch of paint and here we go we're ready to kind of move on and one detail down let's get on with the next so another area that I want to take care of a few details here is the weathering and the paint finish on this. And if you remember back in episode two, and you can go back and take a look at that, we laid down the base colors a couple of times. And, and then we did some oils, work with the oil paints to add some weathering and bring out some of the colors and you know add some nuance and variation and color variations and things like that. At this stage, we've got a great a great platform here. The model's starting to come together. That's where we ended up with episode number two. But now I want to add some more finer detailed weathering aspects to it. So a little bit of scuffing and chipping here. Now these are not really deep chips, mostly like I said scuffing. So I'll use a sand color that's very similar to my base color here and just add those, especially on those areas of high traffic along panel lines, just to give again a little bit of personality. I like to call it personality, a little bit of uh, wear and tear to tell a little bit of that story and just kind of again just add some character to to some of these panels and some of these higher traffic areas let's continue with the weathering shall we well let's move a little bit downwards we'll go down towards the running gear in the lower hole and i want to bulk up this area a little bit show some accumulation of dirt and mud and earth effects and things like that. So I'll be using some of that dry seagrass. That'll be kind of my bulk, give a little bit of texture. I'll be using some of the dry ground, terrain's texture, and the splattered mud, acrylic pastes. And just bring some of those heavier weathering effects, some accumulated dirt and dust and mud and grass into these areas here. But always being conscious that I want to have that kind of a contrast between lights and darks and bring out those features on the running gear itself. But I'm not really trying to go for some, say, heavily weathered or muddy type of appearance here. In this case, I just want to show some accumulation perhaps over time of dust and dirt and dirt clods and, and whatever that's gotten caught up into the running gear and around the suspension and such just to kind of set the tone of this guy that's been out running around across these fields of Italy here. And I don't know how he ended up down this, this cliff, probably running away from, I don't know, an artillery barrage or a fighter bomber attack and just went, trying to get out of the way and <laughs> made a wrong turn and didn't know the terrain enough and ended up getting stuck down there but you know that's a story we can tell ourselves in our own heads but in terms of the weathering just slowly but surely building up these effects until I'm satisfied and then we'll keep moving on to some other details. I guess when you save all the details towards the end, <laughs> you just don't get bored, Cove, because we've already worked with the photo etch, we've worked with some chipping, we've done some heavier weathering on the hull. Now I want to take care of the little tarp that goes across 
uh, the top of the gun here just to that was a little rain mat there so in this case I'm gonna make it out of some fine tissue paper and I'll, of course we could do this out of magic sculpt or epoxy sculpt or some other type of material but I do like the idea of using the tissue paper because there is a uh, a realism to it I believe that you can't quite get out of like the sculpting putty so what I've done is cut out a shape that's about the same size that I need and I folded it in half and basically made a double sheet out of it and now I'm just folding over the edges here and applying it to the vehicle itself and just a few drops of white glue and it will kind of help moisten it and I can kind of form it into the right texture here and just fill that gap very nicely and I'll be held in place from the glue. The next thing I want to do is add just a little bit of detail, a little bit of personality again to this. I don't know if this is accurate or not, but I'm going to add some little ringlets or grommets to the edge of this. And from that, I've got a little bit of wire, thin wire here. Twist it around my drill bit just to get a little circular pattern or a spring. And then let's cut the individual wafers or a little bit individual circles from that spring. And these will become little eyelets onto my tarp. And I think this just adds a really nice little finishing detail here. Just you know, somehow it was attached to the vehicle, maybe through some, <laughs> I know they weren't snaps, but, um, you know, this, this gives a little bit of, like I said, a little bit of detail. I think that really helps to enhance those little visual interest areas on the vehicle itself. Well, I guess that brings us to the next big thing I need to tackle, and those will be the tracks. Now, my intention here was to use the kit tracks, but just as I was about ready to get started with those, I was contacted by Demon Barber Design, a 3D print company out of Sweden, and they asked if I'd be willing to take a look at their tracks and perhaps, if applicable, use them on this project. I said, yeah, of course, I'll take a look at them. So here we are. We're with this unboxing. It only took about six days, eight days to get here. So very quick shipping. The tracks look great. We have left and right track pins, so inside, outside track pins on your runs. According to the instructions from the kit, I'll need 98 links per side. And so now it's just a matter of counting out some links. I ended up using 98 on one side and 99 on the other. I don't know why that is. The track pins just go in as you would expect. Add a touch of super glue on the interior side of the track head, just or the pin head in order to keep them in place. The pins do have a slight tendency to slide out, so the super glue is somewhat necessary. But they go together so well, these tracks, they were all put together within an hour, both, both links. And once I had everything in place, just a last final track pin, and I'm ready to go. So before we leave the tracks, I just want to say thank you to Demon Barber Designs. Those tracks were absolutely fantastic, easy to build. They look fantastic. I also have some samples of some other products, some other 3D printed accessories that they are producing. They all look very high quality. I'll leave links in the description below on how to contact them. I think they would be a fantastic resource for your own modeling. So let's get back to the weathering here. So I have a pretty good idea of the materials I'll be using for the diorama base. And so I want to incorporate some of those same materials onto the model itself. So everything starts tying together. I've added some of the dry seagrass, so they'll be on the diorama base. And I'm also using some of the pigments that I've used on the lower hull that I'll also be using onto the diorama base. And just kind of tapping those over the pigment fixer just to give it a little bit of a crunchy, dirty sort of a feeling here. This is a first step. I'm going to tie all these together a little bit later once everything's in place. Adding some oils here at just the last moment in order to kind of enhance some of those dust effects. And then pretty soon everything will be ready to go. And we'll be able to start tying everything together once it's on the base. Just a brief timeout so I can say thank you to my Patreon. Those are the names that you see scrolling across your screen right now. These members help support this channel and bring new content. If you enjoy this channel and would like to support it further, I do have that Patreon page. The link is in the description below. In exchange, early viewing of these videos, photos of ongoing projects, special feature videos, and a Discord server. Please consider supporting through Patreon. Thank you. Well, here we are, and we're starting to finally work on this base. And as the reference photograph shows, <laughs> and you can see why we're going to call this Bottoms Up, this base is going to take quite a few elevations here. It's quite dramatic, of course. Just going to mark off a few kind of guidelines here, just a rough estimate of what I need here using that pencil on some foam. You can see how I kind of mock it up. Not very exacting at this point in time. Cut out a few of these blocks using my hot wire cutter. Glue them together using hot glue and we'll start kind of building this up and trying to replicate that slope of that scene. Very dramatic. After a few trials and errors, and actually it wasn't that many errors, this actually went together a lot quicker than I thought it might. Uh, I've got this basic elevation here, and that's going to be a perfect, I think, perfect setting for this. And I think, I think I captured the angle 
uh, rather remarkably well at this stage. And I could do a little bit of finessing here as we go along, but not so bad for a first try. And before I get onto the scenery and adding the landscape to the base itself, I want to go ahead and add the sidewalls or the edging to the base around the foam. This is basswood. It's a little bit harder to cut, but it makes really nice edging, really nice sidewalls here. So I'll just cut those out in a kind of a rough manner at this point. It's attached to the foam using hot glue. Now I can start working on my groundwork. Once again, I'm going back to the Sculpey. This is really nice. I'm enjoying using the Sculpey. It's easy to work with. It's very pliable, have a long working time. I think if that's the downfall, when I'm because I'm using quite a bit. It's quite thick application in this case. It did take quite a while to dry. This is an air dry type of a Sculpey. So this took pretty much overnight before I was able to really start working on it again. But again, the, lo the longer working times allows me to do things such as get those tracks nice and settled so my contours are nicely matched with the model itself. Just a touch of water every now and again on the sculpting tool just to keep things from sticking and it couldn't be easier. On the next morning, I went ahead and wanted to give it a little bit more texture, kind of unify the surface. So I'm using the acrylic terrains paste, and this is actually just a neutral color. When it dries, it actually is a clear color, but this has some texture to it, so it's got a bit of a sand grit to it. So I'm adding that now over the top of the Sculpty, and this will lay the first foundation onto the groundscape. And if that weren't enough, yes, the blue bowl of good stuff has made a return appearance. For those of you unfamiliar, the Blue Bowl of Good Stuff is just a collection of natural elements that I get when I take my walks. So it's got dirt, and it's got rocks, and sticks, and stones. All of this adds to the variation of the groundscape, really to help it make it more convincing. One final test fit here, just to make sure everything's lined up, and it looks pretty darn good. So at this point, let's get some paint on this and start getting ready to finish up our base. Now, I'm not sure exactly why or how the stew got down this ravine. My sense is he was trying to get out of trouble fairly quickly, couldn't quite see where he was going, and part of the reason he couldn't see was because of the dense foliage along the top of the ridge line there. And part of that foliage are some of these taller type trees, so I need to make a few of those. And for that, I'm going to make some armature, and the armature wire I'm using is the type that you get at florist shops or from florist departments. And this is what they use to make bouquets. It's a great type of a wire, easy to bend and holds its shape very, very well. Well, we're at the time now where we can really start pulling this together. So we have our basic ground colors painted on. And now, once again, the blue bowl of good stuff comes in handy. So just a light coating of PVA glue or white glue mixed with water. Sprinkle some more of the textures over the top of the surface here. And just, again, to add one more layer of visual interest. Once the glue's dry, then I can come back to do what I think is one of the more important parts of doing any sort of diorama base, and that is to come back in and start picking out some of these details, some of these rocks and stones and sticks and grasses using the acrylic paints. This is where everything really starts to sparkle and come to life. Now that I have the basic groundscape in place, so the basic earth 
in place. Now I can start adding the greenery and for that I'll be using a variety of different elements here. So the dry seagrass added some texture early on in the process and now we have a, a variety of grass tufts and different type of leaves that I'll be adding throughout to build up the landscape. Now I think this is starting to come together nicely. As much as I enjoy the grass tufts and the foliage as they come straight from the box, they tend to be a little bit maybe too vibrant in color and especially too uniform in appearance. So just a light layer. This is highly thinned acrylic paint. This is, happens to be light sand, which works well with the vehicle, the model itself. Just a light spritz over the top of everything just tones things down a bit and helps create a little bit of a more unified appearance. Well, I'm sure you've noticed by now that we've, we're really working from this the ground up, literally, when we do our diorama basis. You know, actually starting with the pink foam, and then we added the Sculpey, and then we added the texture paste, and then a couple of different layers of blue bowls of good stuff. And then we've adjusted the painting throughout, adjusted the colors throughout, added those, you know, green, the grass tufts and some of the foliage. Now we're ready to start working on some of those taller trees. And of course, throughout the process, it's never too late to go back and just pick out some details here and there, add a little paint, pick out a rock, add a little highlight to a stick, make a piece of grass a little bit more green, and anything just to bring out a little more detail and add some visual interest. And then as one of the more final last steps, we need to start tying everything together. Just one last time between the model and the scenery. We've added some of this foliage to the, the base itself, some of these leaves. So I want to add some of those leaves. Again, this, this stew has crashed over this cliff and torn through all this vegetation. So there would be, of course, some vegetation, some leaves kind of scattered amongst the vehicle here as it crashed down this ravine. And then just one more color adjustment here. This is, again, highly diluted sand color. I'm just trying to desaturate some of these colors a little bit. I've added some of those extra taller trees. Just want to make sure that they all look in place as well. Well, we're certainly coming down to the end of the stretch here now. We've got this Stug who has just come across this ravine, tumbled down to the bottom here. He's ripped up some foliage, come to rest at the bottom here in this ditch, kicked up some earth. We're going to spread some pigments around here, add some dust tones, fix them in place using the odorless thinner, tying everything together. This is the fun part. Yep, we can start to see the finish line for sure. Sadly, this is starting to bring us to the end of this episode and the series itself. Well, gosh, this has been an eventful series. First, we worked on an interior of this stug, so that was part of it. Then we painted and repainted and sort of repainted the stug two and a half, three times. We worked on some figures, the British chaps. We've built this wonderful diorama base based on these, this photograph, this reference photograph. And here we are at the final scene. We've got our stug that has tumbled down this ravine, become disabled. We've got our British chaps who are posing for pictures or perhaps just gloating in front of their chums up, up in front. It's just kind of a humorous scene. I'm really glad I did it. I hope you've enjoyed this as well. If you do like this channel, please hit that like and subscribe. If you like the things I do here and would like to support the channel even further, please, I do have a Patreon page. I'd appreciate your support over there. Until the next one, guys, we'll bring something new to you. Take care and happy modeling.